everyone, MB here out on a sunny day in early April. This past Easter weekend, we caught up with the Easter Bunny to learn more about Ontario's rabbits and hares. When classifying rabbits and hares, they are members of the family Leporidae and in the order Lagomorpha. So when we refer to rabbits and hares, we often refer to them with the term Lagomorphs. In today's lesson, we'll aim to answer five questions about rabbits and hares. What species do we have here in Ontario? Where do they live? What do they eat? Can you harvest rabbits and hares in Ontario? And we'll take a closer look at their unique skull morphology. All right, so for our first question, how many different species of rabbits and hares live in Ontario? Ontario is home to five different species of rabbits and hares. Eastern Cottontail, a very common species across most of central and southern Ontario. With smaller and shorter ears than a hare, eastern cottontails have brownish fur with black tipped guard hairs. Arctic hare and generally hares are larger than rabbits. Arctic hares are found in the very, very, very northern parts of Ontario. White-tailed jackrabbit, which is a hare. This species is said to be found in the far northwestern part of the province, although according to iNaturalist, there haven't been any recent sightings in Ontario. They are more of a western species. The European hare, also known as the brown hare. This species is found in southern Ontario, they don't turn completely white in winter, but may develop patches of white fur in the colder months. This species was introduced to Ontario a little over 100 years ago. And the snowshoe hare, which is also known as the varying hare, because of its varying fur color. In the spring and summer, the snowshoe hare will be brown, and in the winter, its fur will turn completely white to help it camouflage in with its surroundings. Snowshoe hare are found across central, eastern, and northern Ontario. Snowshoe hare are an important prey species for larger predators like the Canada lynx. Lynx populations and snowshoe hare populations are very closely connected and they go in cycles. predator-prey relationship is very well studied, with the snowshoe hare considered to be a keystone species in some regions of the province. Thinking of the adaptations that snowshoe hares have to help them survive in northern parts of Ontario, their name comes from the wide shape of their feet that help them to travel on top of deep snow, just like a pair of snowshoes. Also, they are born fully furred with their eyes open and are capable of hopping almost immediately. Other baby rabbits and hares are born naked with no fur and blind with their eyes closed. An adult snowshoe hare can travel up to three meters in just one bound or one hop. To put that into perspective, here's something that you can try. Take a moment to measure out three meters on the ground with tape. Set the measuring tape along the side for reference. Starting at one end, standing long jump style, how far can you jump? The world record for standing long jump is 3.71 meters, held by Byron Jones, an NFL player in the United States. That's just a bit further than the snowshoe hare. Our next question is where do rabbits and hares live? Rabbits and hares live in open habitats that provide areas to feed, but also areas for cover. Grasslands, meadows, fields, and forest edge habitat. Brush piles, like the giant one behind me, provide excellent habitat for rabbits and hares. So think twice before cleaning your brush pile up. Our next question is what do rabbits eat? Rabbits are herbivores, which means they are specially adapted to eat strictly plants. In the summer, they'll consume fresh plants, including the flowers, the leaves, and the stems. In the winter, they'll consume buds and twigs. 
It's easy to identify rabbit brows by the angled cut on the twig made by their incisors. Taking a closer look at their digestive system, all herbivores and omnivores have a cecum, a small pouch in their digestive tract where cellulose is digested. Carnivores have either a small cecum or no cecum at all. The cecum is located near the beginning of the large intestine. We as humans have a cecum as we have evolved from our ancestors, but now our cecum acts as a reservoir for partially digested food and digestive juices. Our next question is, can you harvest rabbits and hares in Ontario? The answer is yes. Be sure to check out our virtual lesson on wildlife tracking to learn more about the signs that rabbits and hares leave behind. In areas where rabbit and hare hunting is permitted, the season generally runs from mid-September through until February or March. Those who hunt rabbits often use hound dogs to flush the rabbits out from their hiding spots. Snowshoe hare, or varying hare, can also legally be trapped with a snare in Northern Ontario by someone who holds a small game license. Now let's take a closer look at the unique skull morphology of a legomorph. Like rodents, a legomorph's incisors will continue to grow for as long as the animal lives. Also like rodents, there is a distinct diastema or space between the incisors and the cheek teeth. Unlike rodents, however, legomorphs have four incisors on their upper jaw, two visible out front and two directly behind, often referred to as peg teeth. Legomorph skulls also have the presence of fenestrations or open networks of bone on certain regions of the skull. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and comment below. And if you'd like to learn more about Ontario's legomorphs, reach out by email and book a free live virtual question and answer session with one of our educators. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay connected as we learn together outside the classroom. Thank you.